So I'm a huge fan of having a capsule makeup collection and I'm also a huge fan of luxury makeup. Let me walk you through all of my makeup. I wanna show you the items in my capsule makeup collection, the items that I'm decluttering and the items that are not really in my capsule makeup collection, but that I am keeping as well. Let's get into it. This is my capsule makeup collection. My capsule makeup collection has grown a tad. Also, I don't use all of these products every day. First things first, my Chanel foundation. I don't use concealer. This foundation is incredible. It's the Chanel number no. one de Chanel fond de tint. It's very glowy. I have it on now. It's the only foundation I own. It's the only like complexion product I own. This bottle, yes, it was like 80 bucks or something, but I just repurchased it. This is the second bottle I own. The first one lasted me 19 months and I used it every day besides one month where I like had a different foundation that I was trying out. So I love this product. Now let's get into everything else in my capsule makeup collection. I have my Muji pen in here, my favorite pen, that doesn't count. Um, okay, so this is a Chanel foundation brush. It's incredible. I have all this stuff linked in my shop my. This foundation brush, look at how long the bristles are, that they're so gentle when they apply the foundation on the face. I find that with this brush, I use so little product and it gets the product onto my face just like so evenly and in such a thin layer. Originally, I bought the foundation without the brush, even though at the Chanel Beauty Atelier here in Soho, the makeup artist put it on me with the brush. I got home, I started applying it with my fingers and I found that it went on really thick and I didn't like how it looked. So I bought the brush and the brush is 100% worth it. Next up, my second most used makeup product is this Chanel lipstick. It's a lip duo. One side is lipstick, the other side is gloss. And I discovered this product because I went to the Chanel Beauty Atelier and I said to them like, can you recommend your most long wearing lipstick and find the right color for me. She recommended this product, exactly this color, and I love it. I wear it, this is the blush that I'm wearing, and it's also the lipstick that I'm wearing. And this is really cool, like it really stains my cheeks when I wear it as blush and my lips, and when you put the gloss on top, it lasts for hours, it's great. But with this product, I've had a lot of people buy it, um, and tell me like you influenced me to buy it, but it doesn't look the same on you as it does on me And one thing I will say is that I apply it on my lips But I don't put on too much product because it's so pigmented and then I just like really thin it out on my lips from there next up Another one of my most used products. I use this basically every day. This is the Anastasia um, Brow definer in soft brown. I have it on right now one side is the pencil and the other side is the spoolie, which I use for my eyelashes as well. Um, I've been using this brow product, not this exact one, but like the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow definer since I was 14. Love it. Okay, brow gel. This is something that took me a really long time to find the perfect brow gel for myself. This is a clear brow gel from Rare Beauty. I feel like Rare Beauty, like I'm not into their packaging. I'm not into the vibe. I'm not like excited about the brand like whatsoever, but I do feel like their products are really good like staple products. Like all of the products that I've gotten from them, which are three, which you'll see all of them, I've found work incredibly well. So this is their brow gel. I really like that it gives, like it keeps my brow hairs up but it's a flexible hold. When I touch my brows, they're not crusty. It's not like laminated looking. It just looks very natural. And I remember I tried Glossier Boy Brow. I tried NYX Brow Glue. I didn't like those. I didn't feel like they kept my brows up as well. Also NYX Brow Glue, while I did use it for a few months, it's very sticky, which I don't love. Next up, Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm. I use this all the freaking time. This is vanilla. I got pink sugar, but I felt like the pink color wall very sheer. It was like kind of a warm undertone and I really suit cool undertones. So it didn't quite go on me and I returned it to Sephora. I am a shameless, shameless um, returner of items to Sephora. Like I will buy something knowing I'm extremely likely to return it and then shamelessly return it. Like I'm surprised that they haven't like 
t said something to me about my returning habits. Anyway, I love this Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm in Vanilla. I'm like literally like, this has been going. I've used it so many times a day for the past like four and a half months that I've had it and I'm still not done. Love this. Okay, next up, let's just go with my Rare Beauty Brown Eyeliner. I love brown eyeliner, unless you have black hair, I think I would probably prefer brown eyeliner. Um, I also mainly, I actually mainly use it to emphasize my little beauty marks and make them bolder because I just think it like really gives another dimension and like a unique look to my makeup look. Um, it has like a little sharpener on the end, which I love and use all the time and which is like probably a little gunky. Amazing product. My e.l.f. blush brush. I use this to blend out my blush. I'll show you right now. My Chanel lipstick. We'll pull a French girl style and use this, our lipstick, as blush. And I feel like this gives the best, like, lit from within look. The thing is that with this lipstick, because it is a long wearing lipstick, it will stain your skin immediately. You have to like attack it really quickly and blend it in. Otherwise, like you're gonna have like a dot where you applied it. So see, this blush brush is amazing. I love the size, I love the puffiness. Yeah, I feel like it works so well and I bought it at like a Rite Aid. So it was $4, I think. Amazing brush. Okay, moving on to bronzer and contour. This is an area that I feel like is a bit contentious for me. Right now I am wearing, I guess I'm using it as bronzer. It's the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. I sometimes use bronzer. Right now I have it in these placements. I don't wanna to put too much more on because I like how my makeup looks now. But I use my blush brush from e.l.f., the same one that I use for blush, whatever. And I like to like give myself a sun-kissed look to find the jaw a tad but I already have a strong jaw so I don't want to define it too much you know give some color back to my forehead to be honest I do like this product I am glad I use it and own it and um once it's out I will probably repurchase it so yeah that's my thoughts on the contour wand I just don't love the idea of contouring too much and I also don't feel like People need to contour half as much as they do. Like sometimes I'm like, you look like a man with how strong your jawline is. You know what I mean? Um, so that's my two cents. Next up, Chanel Boy. Beautiful, 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 beautiful nude lipstick. It's like, it kind of has a pearlescent glow to it as well. Um, I love this lipstick so much. It's also just like a gorgeous item. This is, I guess, my only other lipstick lipstick besides this one that I'm going to keep. Love these two. Well, I guess there is there is one other lipstick I'm going to keep. But if you want a bitchy, sophisticated, like, undercover chic lipstick, Chanel Boy is your friend. Okay, mascara. Chanel's um, Le Volume de Chanel in Noir. I swear to God. I had one, I've had, this is my second one. The first one I used for six months. This one I just got and I'm like loving it just as much as I love the first one. I tried to buy the full size and it didn't look as good. You know how mascara at the end is dry so it looks better on? You know what I mean? It's, it doesn't make your lashes clumpy. Like that's what the sample is. It's like the best part of the mascara when it's a little dry. I love this sample. And I don't think I'm gonna buy the full size. I think I'm just gonna keep getting samples from Chanel and using this as my mascara because it's better than the other mascaras that I have that I'm getting rid of that are full size and which I paid money for. Okay, next up. I got this today. This is the Makeup Forever Long Wearing Lip Liner. They're like new long wearing lip liner. I didn't mean to get the long wearing one. I just accidentally did in Endless Cacao. I was influenced by one of my favorite influencers, Laura Galibi. She's also like a cool toned girly. And I'm gonna be honest, when I put this on at Sephora, I was like, oh, it looks, I look dead with this because it's a very cool toned gray brown. 
but with my red lipstick I really like it is a great brown color with my red lipstick so I think I'm gonna keep it I mean no promises I might end up returning it to Sephora I got it today and I like to just sit with products for months, weeks, like wear them, try them out as long as I want um, before really deciding whether I'm gonna keep it or not. But I think I'm gonna keep it because how pretty does that look? I love it. Next up, my Charlotte Tilbury lip liner in Super Size Me, I believe. Super Size Me, yeah. It's the perfect match to my Chanel lipstick. These two go really well together when I want just like a pinky color. It's very pretty. It's very pretty. Although I heard that this is like, I mean, a lot of these products aren't clean beauty products, but this one supposedly has stuff that interrupts your hormones. I don't know. I don't know much about that sort of thing, but I'm not sure I will be repurchasing this when it runs out. Fun fact, this I believe is a clean beauty product. Someone on TikTok told me that this number one to Chanel line of Chanel makeup is clean beauty. When I took my hair out of its rollers, I was a little bit like, oh no, I messed up my hair, but it's it's starting to look better. I like it. Okay, last two everyday products. Say Glossy Bounce in Bounce <laughs> and Road Lip Peptide Treatment in Toast. So this one I just got. I love it so much. It is obviously a clean beauty product. It's a really beautiful gloss and it's very moisturizing as well. I like wearing it just on its own when I'm doing like a very like no makeup makeup look. It's very glossy, it's very moisturizing. It has a very subtle color. So if you're like low contrast makeup, this this would look good on you. This is a little bit too low contrast for me. I think I'm a medium or a high contrast and this is too low contrast for me. And this is the Road Lip Peptide Treatment in Toast. It has gotten a bit grainy, but it looks really good over my like signature Chanel lipstick that I wear every day. It kind of like cuts the redness and makes it more brown, which I love. Also, I love that with this lip gloss, I can wear out my Chanel. I can wear this on, like I put this on at home, um, you know, do the whole thing. It's kind of a high maintenance lip product, if you know what I mean. Then I leave the house, it's dyed my lips more or less for the day, it's like tinted them, stained them. And then I leave the house just with toast if I'm having like a very, you know, I'm going, I'm having a day in the city where I'm not gonna be able to like do a lot of looking in a mirror and reapplying lipstick, I'll just bring toast with me and put it on and that will kind of like boost my lip look throughout the day. Also, I have the phone case. I don't know where it is, but I have the phone case that it goes into and it's super fun. I honestly wouldn't recommend the Rode phone case because it's so bulky. Like it makes your phone feel huge. So the last item in my like everyday capsule makeup collection is my eyelash curler. I love it. This is from One Plus Other, which is sold at drugstores. It's a great eyelash curler. I've never owned the Shiseido one, but this one does curl my eyelashes like for, you know, it lasts throughout the day. I really love having a lash lift and a lash tint, which is when they semi-permanently curl your actual lashes and dye them black. And when, you know, when she said, oh, I'm going to dye your eyelashes black, I was like, no, don't do that. I usually, you know, I kind of like brown mascara and stuff, but she was like, no, 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 like you, the black is so subtle. It doesn't look like black mascara. And I have to say, I love the lash lift and tint. And I'm not someone who gets like treatments done. Like I get my nails done sometimes. Like ne I've never gotten acrylics in my life. I barely get gel manicures. I've never gotten lash extensions. I've never gotten a brow lamination. Like I've gotten facials. Like I don't do beauty treatments, but like a lash lift and tint is so natural. It looks basically like this, but slightly better because it's like even more curled and love that, love that. I want to get one soon. The only real downside is that they kind of take a long time. It's like 45 minutes of you in like a salon, like with your eyes closed while they do stuff to your eyes and it's uncomfortable. So that's no fun. I'm going to show you now the items that, the additional items in my capsule makeup collection, and then I'm going to show you the items that I'm decluttering.
item in my not everyday makeup collection my like additional makeup collection this elf pencil sharpener i had the nars pencil sharpener which everyone raves about and like i'm telling you it ate up like half of my um charlotte tilbury pencil like i kept sharpening and sharpening and i realized i was going way too far it was a shitty pencil sharpener so i got this one from elf and i love it next up this chanel blush this color is a bit pale for me um i actually got it from a friend i was like in the bathroom with her and she was drunk it was a party at her house and i was like going through her makeup while we were in her bathroom during the party and i was like oh this is a nice blush can i try it on and she was like you can have it i never wear it so i was like okay and i took it and then like um oh look how pretty it looks over wow oh, it looks pretty i like it <laughs> over my current blush it just like enhances it a bit and also like mattifies. Anyway, after the party, I was like, oh, thanks for the blush, like a day later. And she was like, what blush? And I was like, the Chanel blush that you gave me when you were drunk. And she was like, I don't remember that, but keep it. And I was like, I will. Anyway, the main reason I'm keeping this is because it's nice to have a makeup product with a compact for travel. You know what I mean? You don't know where you might need to be doing your makeup. So I'm keeping it because it has a nice big... Oh, hello. It has a nice big mirror. Next up, setting spray. Um, this is an e.l.f. setting spray that was like $10, maybe less. I love it so much. Stay all night micro fine setting mist up to 16 hours of wear. I got the Charlotte Tilbury one and I swear to God, it gave me an allergic reaction. Like I felt like tight in my throat after using it once. Uh, so I was like, I'm not using it anymore. And I returned it to Sephora shamelessly. Now this e.l.f. one, which is probably like half the price, maybe even a third of the price is so much better. Hourglass setting powder. As you can tell, I don't really use powder products much, but every now and then you do need setting powder. Like, especially if I'm filming a YouTube video, I didn't today, but like I look really shiny on camera right now because I have a lot of lights on me. So having a setting powder is necessary for that. I used to be oily and I feel like because I'm like now like 31 and like out of my 20s when there was like a lot of crazy hormonal changes and because I have like a particular skincare routine, I'm just less oily. And yeah, so this setting powder, I did not buy this. I got this with points at Sephora. I remember like this was one of the like, you could use a hundred points to get a little product. And I saw this and was like, you know what? I don't want to spend money on setting powder, but I might need it at some point. So I got it. I've used it a million times and it still looks totally full. So mwah. second to last in my extra makeup products that I'm keeping is this Chanel lip and cheek product. Um, it's also in the number one to Chanel makeup line. It's an okay product, if I'm being totally honest. I don't feel like it lasts very li long on the lips or the cheeks. It's like kind of an imprecise product to apply. I really liked the idea of it, so I bought a different one and has have since given that to someone else. Like, it's okay. It's okay. Um, the reason I'm keeping it is because it's my only red lipstick and when I go to Paris at some point in the near future, I'm going to want to have the option of a red lip and now I have one. But like, I don't really like red lips on me otherwise. The last item in my makeup collection that I'm keeping is this Bobbi Brown eyeshadow brush. And it's kind of surprising to me that I'm keeping this. I'm not really sure. I mean, I know why. But I'm keeping it really for nostalgia because like in high school, college, I remember my mom always bought me Bobbi Brown makeup. This was back in the height of the Bobbi Brown era when Bobbi Brown was like at her best. And I had a bunch of eyeshadow palettes from her and I would wear eyeshadow a lot in college, even though like no one else did at the time. But nowadays I don't wear eyeshadow ever. I don't even own eyeshadow. I just put bronzer and blush on my eyes every now and then. That being said, this eyeshadow brush was expensive and it's beautiful and it brings me memories, so I'm keeping it. It's interesting to me that I'm keeping it too because I don't usually like keep things for nostalgia's sake. Like I'm really kind of against that, so whatever. Onto stuff I'm decluttering. Number one, 
this Charlotte Tilbury mini pressed powder. Like this was my pressed powder before the hourglass one. This one's talc free. This Charlotte Tilbury one is not. Like I wish I didn't have to get rid of it because look at how cute this compact is. Like, please, I would love to like, you know, I thought I would carry it around more than I did. I like don't think I ever carried it around because I don't use powder, but um, I don't want to keep it because it is talc and talc is kind of bad for you. So thank you and goodbye. Next up is this Typology Lip Peeling Mask. I've used it. It absolutely works. The first time I put it on, I got this like layer of like dead skin that I just like scraped off with my nail. This stuff works. It also like makes my lips a little red, which looks cute, but it's kind of a niche product. You know what I mean? Like, do I really want to own a lip peeling mask or a lip scrub? Like, I just don't like owning a ton of shit. I like own only owning my favorite, favorite things. And this is just not necessary. This is Typology's newest lip oil. It's like the black cherry color. And it's very, very, very pretty. I just don't really fancy it on myself. What I love about these is that they are clean beauty. All of Typology is clean and it's also skincare. Like this is also good for your lips. That being said, I just don't fancy either of these colors. This is another Typology lip oil in the pink color. I've worn these on my lips and my cheeks. I played with them for a while and, and it's goodbye. This is a Typology highlighter, which is also a skincare product. It has vitamin C in it and aloe vera. See, it's a highlighter. Um, I've mixed it with my foundation a few times. It's, you know, it's very subtle. I don't own any highlighters um, and I don't feel the need. I'm already glowy. Next up, a Typology Hyaluronic Mask. This is really nice, but I also prefer my Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm, which works really well. So keeping the theme of lip products, this Road Lip Peptide Treatment in Espresso, I bought it because I was like, oh my God, brown, it will look good on me. Um, but I feel like it makes me look old. I can't quite describe it, but I'm like, this is not flattering on me. I feel like it just doesn't suit me. So, even though it's a product that like a lot of people like covet, I don't want it. Do you see what I mean? Do you like it on me? I don't like it on me. It's too high contrast. I don't look good in high contrast makeup. I think I look good in low or mid, middle contrast makeup. It's looking better, but no, I just, I don't like it. It feels wrong to me. And you have to like your makeup and your fashion. It's like a way of you expressing who you are and sharing with the world who you are. See that color, I like that color so much more, which is basically just my natural color. Okay, this is a good opportunity to show you Chanel Boy. Like I have products, I've put on multiple products, but you'll see kind of what it looks like. So pretty, so bitchy, so chic. I love it. Okay, let's keep going with the lip products. Burt's Bees, Chapstick. I don't use this anymore. No thank you and goodbye. This is not a lip product, but I had a, didn't spend the money on like a fancy beauty blender. I bought one from Rite Aid. Um, it was probably like three bucks or four bucks and I never use it. And also these totally eat up your product. And I love, love, love my Chanel foundation brush. So I was keeping this thinking, maybe I'll use it at some point, blah, blah, blah. Nope. The last lip product, this Fenty, um, lip plumper in Fenty Glow. I put it on the other day and I'm not exaggerating. I had a fear response in my body because this stuff really hurts. Like, you know when you're in a 
you feel fear and it feels like acid enters your blood and then you taste a funny taste in your mouth. That happened as a result of me applying this lip plumper. Even the smell kind of triggers me. I don't know. I love the way it looks. I love that it like brings my natural lip color to the surface. I love that it's such a pretty color. It's like a nudie red color. But, but it's a no. I don't want my lip products to be triggering fear responses in me. Okay, third to last product that I'm getting rid of and then I'm gonna show you is the Rare Beauty Blush in Happy. It's very light pink. I bought this in a phase when I loved light pink blush. Light pink, light pink blush also doesn't suit me. I did keep it for a while because I was like, oh, it'll look good when I'm on camera. It's like, it's a very long wearing cream blush, which is something that I admire about this product because it's hard to find a long wearing, very natural looking cream blush. Like this is the only one I think I know besides my lipstick that I wear as blush. That being said, I couldn't find any colors in their range that suited me. And I also just like my blush. I kept it because I was like, oh, I might wear it for like, you know, when I'm on camera or appearance, I don't know, for some reason, I thought I would wear it for fancy occasions. And the truth is that I wore it, I was like on the news um, and I did my makeup to be on camera and I wore this blush and I did not like how it looked. I didn't like it, I didn't like it. Um, it was too light for me, the color's wrong, it's, it's goodbye. The last two products. The last two products. I like both of these. I'm gonna say that. I'm not wearing mascara right now, so let's try on both of these. This is a Victoria Beckham mascara. My mom gave it to me. This is when it's useful to have a compact with a mirror. See, I really like only very subtle looking blush. I mean mascara. Although this is a nice one. Maybe I should keep this one. So that's the Victoria Beckham mascara. Also, the packaging on this mascara is next level nice. Like, this mascara is so heavy. It feels like this is made out of ceramic or something. Maybe I'll keep that. I might regret getting rid of this if I get rid of it. And this is the Refi Lash Sculpt Mascara. This is a very nice mascara, too. Maybe I should keep both of them. I feel like this Refi Lash Sculpt is really curling my lashes. I just don't love heavy mascara on me, which is why I like my little Chanel sample. They're giving different effects. Victoria Beckham feels more like doll-like mascara. I feel like this side makes me look like a doll. This side gives me long spindly lashes. I do love a really long lash look. I always do this when I put on mascara. I like comb through it with my little spoolie to like separate out the lashes. That does look pretty. Ow. Should I keep them both? Should I have three mascaras? I mean, why not? I already own them. You know what? I think I should. for special occasions. Not that I like looking like this daily. I don't know, it looks very pretty, but it's, I just don't like looking like I'm wearing a lot of makeup. And now with mascara and with all my other makeup, I feel like I look like I'm wearing a lot of makeup. <sighs> okay, it's decided. I'm keeping both of these. They're both really nice. But I am getting rid of these products. What am I gonna do with them, you ask? Um, I'm probably going to give them to friends and family aka my mom and friends who come over to visit. I feel like I look like a doll with this makeup. It's a lot. Anyways, what do you think of my capsule makeup collection? What are your questions on how to build a capsule makeup collection? And are there any items you think I should get rid of or that I'm getting rid of and that you think I should keep? Let me know. Like, subscribe. I love you guys.